that age of Aquarius means understanding the importance of every individual, understanding that every person comes to the world to offer something. We all have the ability to leave something in the world and it comes through our individual lived experiences, but we have to become willing to embrace it, understand it, and in that process, let go of the old stuff. And my old stuff was limiting because I couldn't accept who I was. Hello, Roger. A warm welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm just so happy to be here. I'm excited to speak with you today, and I'm so honored that you came on here because uh, you have some special abilities. You are channeling Wilhelm. Uh, you're also helping people really step into their purpose and to step into their abilities to be ready for this new time that is going to happen that you are channeling is going to happen and i'm i'm really curious about what this new time actually entails you know everybody is speaking about this big shift of consciousness and i'm curious about how that actually looks like and perhaps we also get to meet willem today if mm -hmm. possible uh however i would love to hear a bit about your backstory like how did you end up doing this amazing work that you're doing today have you always had these these gifts and these abilities or was it something that all of a sudden opened up uh, in your life because i know you've had quite a tough life mm -hmm. right i resisted my abilities and i didn't know what they were and they've been with me probably all of my life and um but they seem very strange to me i think a lot of people might go through that when they have an awakening of a spiritual sense and you know i just had a very different uh, life moving through it. So I didn't understand why I was experiencing some of the things that I that I was, some of the difficulties, some of the challenges, and also not knowing who I who I wanted to be. That I never had this sense even as a child of who I wanted to become. And I just had to look at my parents. What did they do? Maybe I'll do that. And I just kept trying to find something. And even when I would go into work when I start, um, started my professional life, going into adult life, you know, a career, I kept switching around. I had this joke where I said I would take a job and I'd stay there for about four years, then I'd have to leave because something else seemed better or different. Never understood while I was doing that. And then at the same time, I was having all these other issues that were happening, as I call them, illnesses, diseases, all kinds of things. And it wasn't until 1988 that I started to see something else, something different. And that's when I started doing automatic writing, which is when Wilhelm first started, began to come through. Right. And uh, I just have to mention also, you are, or I don't know if you're doing it still, but you're a vocal coach or as yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I find that fascinating because I'm a singer. Ah, yes. <laughs> and I've had so much troubles with my voice, like nodules and everything. And I had surgery. Ah. So I should have come to you. Ages. Oh, yes. Because that's my specialty. I said, listen, no, none of my clients ever get nodules. Like my whole, my, my entire thing is about using the voice in the correct way. So you don't get those, have those problems come up. And we find that it's always something, these little habits that we might have in the way that we produce sound um, that we learn or develop over time that lead to the nodules. However, the good news is even when we figure that out, you can also change it. And that's about changing the habits and the way you produce sound so they never come back again. That's the thing that I always like to get people to understand. So. Yeah. Right. But for you, though, there's something else. Oh. <laughs> because you, um, the music for you was a connected to your spiritual sense, to your spiritual side. And um, so the problems in the voice are typically a little bit of a resistance or not accepting that at a certain time or not moving in that direction. Because that's what I would find so many times with my voice. And then with a lot of people that I would work with, I would start to notice that. And and it really came upon um, me when, it, it was probably 30 years ago, I, I don't even remember, but about that long, where a client came to me because she was referred to me by her therapist, because they said, we believe that you have some some blockages in your expression of who you are, and maybe doing you know, some trauma or something that's there, we don't know, but maybe, if you took some vocal lessons and get in touch with your voice, that would make a difference. 
And it did. <laughs> and that's what I, and I thought, oh, I said, there's something else there. Us being willing to own our voices, being willing to understand that we have the ability to own our own voice. That's really what it is. And that, oh, that's so funny. There's, I just thought of this. There was a video that I did. I never understood this. It was many, many years ago. And it was called How to Own Your Own Voice. It was about vocal. It was about singing and all of that. Or, and, and then another one, How to Sing with Your Own Voice. And it just took off that that video had like over a million views on it. And it was, I thought, how did that happen? And which told me that, again, that's the thing that most people are attempting to do is to own their voice. You are so spot on because I feel that's what's the message for me. I was not owning my own voice. And today I, I have a deeper voice, like uh, mm -hmm. a message to share. And I, I'm doing this and I think I'm sort of made to do that. So I know that 2012 was significant for you and so many others. Like I started my show in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened from your perspective in 2012 and actually in your life? I didn't know. This is what I'm, this is the thing that I'm going to tell you. Yes, 2012 that I came to understand later was a really pivotal time in the evolution of our world. We were moving because which we all moved through this evolution, but I didn't know anything about that until later when um, I started understanding that I was given, I had this information, I knew the world was changing, I knew that um, I was receiving different information. In 2020, let me go back a little bit. Um, in 2020, my messages that I would receive, because I, you know, write them every morning, I would channel, uh, do automatic writing and write the messages every single morning. But in 2020, I started receiving different information. And it said we were moving through a restructuring in our world. And that was just didn't make any sense to me. I, I really didn't understand it. And then, but I knew I needed to change. So I started talking about things in a different way. I started saying, oh, we need to pull together groups. We need to come together and all of that. Many people thought I was talking about just the pandemic or something, because we were moving through that. But I knew it was more than that, but it was challenging to really explain that. And so then in 2021, this is the craziest thing ever. I'm, I'm walking, I go out for a walk, and I hear my guidance very clearly saying, we gave you everything you needed to know in 2012. I go, what? I, I don't understand that. I have heard other people mention uh, 2012. I heard another channel. I think Lee Carroll was probably the, one of the first people that I heard speak about 2012. I had no clue as to what that was about. And um, then when I was on this walk and we gave you everything you needed to know in 2012, for this restructuring, to help people move through this restructuring. That didn't make sense. I come back into my home, I go to my computer, I look at, and I, I just arbitrarily looked at a folder that was there that said Wilhelm, which I had not paid attention to, and I open it and the messages there were from 2012. I go, that just was crazy to me. And then I started looking and then the, I said, this doesn't make sense. I kept going through this doubt. Then one morning I, uh, had a meeting that I had to do very early and I was late getting up. So I didn't do my normal um, meditation and, and I didn't have time in writing. And so my guide said, doesn't matter. Pull one of the messages from 2012. It'll work for today. What? <laughs> I did it and I put it out there and I felt like this is terrible. I've never repeated a message like that. And then what happened later that day, my associate read that message. She said, wow, that is exactly what I needed today. I go, what? How did that happen? And so then it just kept going crazy from there. More things started coming up. They started saying to me, if you meet someone who uh, with a birthday on this, on their, if we gave you a message in 2012 on their birthday, it'll probably resonate with them. I started doing that and, and it, that was coming up. All of these things were happening. I still doubted it. Then I, um, I went to a Facebook group <laughs> and I was talking about this and I'm just being funny about it. And this one person said, Roger, don't you know that's when the Mayan calendar ended in 2012 and we all thought the world was going to end? I said, oh, okay, I started to remember that. I remember um, that was a big deal and a lot of people really thought the world was ending and they were getting rid of things because we wouldn't be here anymore. And then I went to look and see what Wilhelm had given me on that date. 
And it said, and the message, the title of that message on December 21st, because that's when the world was supposed to end, December 21st, 2012 said, wait. And go, what? <laughs> and the message was like, using the energy of wait. There's an energy behind the, that word. And what it was saying, like, which later on I came to understand is that we were building something new. Wait for it to show up. The world wasn't ending. We were moving into a new world. We were creating a new world. And the way that we were going to do that is where more people decide to let go of the old ways of being, let go of their limited and restrictive ways of being and thinking and all of that, and come to love themselves because everything is about energy. And each person alive is bringing something to the world now that could help if they decide to move through all of the old stuff. But then they said you're going to have conflict <laughs> because when you move through changes and you have a lot of people doing it, a lot of people don't want to change. And when you don't want to change, then you create resistance and resistance can lead to conflict. They even told me we might have a war. And then the most challenging thing that came through in one of the messages is that you might even bring back a leader like a Hitler. What? They're talking about the evolutionary changes that we always move through. And we can see this when we go back and look at history. We just happen to be living through a time now that's transformational. And we're attempting to move into the fifth dimension, which everyone hears about, or the age of Aquarius, which they say, oh, you thought that was happening a while ago. No, it's happening now. That's what's going on. And that age of Aquarius means understanding the importance of every individual, understanding that every person comes to the world to offer something, but the way they have to offer it is moving through all the old stuff. And the world has to do the same thing, move through all the old stuff. Wow. Uh, I'm amazed how we hear about this so many different places. Like I'm not in doubt anymore that we're in a huge shift. Uh, right. But you mentioned this uh, leader, like a Hitler. Mm -hmm. uh, does it really have to get worse? Uh, like, are, are we facing now some dark times or are we through that already? It's up, and they say it's up to us. Now, first of all, the, 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 this is what I was just talking about this earlier, because the planets are going to keep moving. We are affected energetically in our world by what's going on in the universe. We've seen this. We've seen the moon phases and different aspects where it, 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 everything is energy. And we've um, scientists and have told us forever, you know, we can go back to Einstein or Tesla and all these people who understood creation in terms of energy. But that energy, we are affected by what's happening on our, on all the planets of the galaxy of the universe. And so this particular energy is causing us all to act and come to different ways. We're trying to um, evolve, let's say, and put it to put it a, a different way. But it's an individual choice that we each make. And we begin to understand through the quantum sciences that we all contribute to creation of our lives and our world in exactly the same way. The energy that we choose to emit, and that energy is going to be of light and love, or it's going to be of darkness. <laughs> that's just that's just the way that it is, and we can look at the sciences and understand that. But is a momentum, let's say, that we will develop. We will. So, where is it going to go? It's going to. The universe is going to keep changing, but we will suffer more if we individually refuse to move into who we're be meant to become. I was refusing for a long time, and I'll tell you that I can, I can answer that because it was challenging to understand and accept that these new parts of me were coming about and ones that I tried to ignore for so long. Because uh, when I first, again, when I first started receiving this information in 1988, I didn't want to tell anyone because <laughs> it was so bizarre. And even though it was transforming my life and taking me through everything, it still was difficult to talk about it to a lot of people. I just didn't want to do it. And um, uh, but when the information became so clear, especially in um, 2021, I said, I have to do something. So I, then I, I had to test this and figure if this information I was receiving was correct. So I put people in a course. I called it Four Weeks to Your Best Life. And I took the messages from 2012. Let me see what happens with them. And, and as I did that, and I these put these folks in there, they were transforming. 
And I go, this is crazy how this was happening so quickly. And then it, I was ex explaining it makes sense because we all have the ability, which this is about that legacy, as you mentioned, we all have the ability to leave something in the world and it comes through our individual lived experiences, our eat every person, but we have to become willing to embrace it, understand it, and in that process, let go of the old stuff. And my old stuff was limiting because I couldn't accept who I was. And for 20 years, I from 19, probably 88, I, oh, a few people knew that I was doing the automatic writing, I'm close friends and some family, but even my family thought it was a little strange and weird. And so I didn't talk about it much. And in 2000, about 2007, I believe it was, 2007, 2008, um, I was exposed <laughs> because someone came into my office at the time and found a writing, one of my messages on the desk and read it and said, wow, this really helps me. Who, who wrote this? And I had to say, well, it came through me and I, and it was embarrassing to me. It was crazy, but it said, please send me the messages. So I started doing that. Then a while later, I never wanted to put it out there. I never want, I never thought of this as a venture or a career or anything. It was just something that I was doing for me. And then it became, no, you're doing this for everyone. That's what the, the awareness that started to come, but I still wasn't accepting it. So after this in 2007 or eight or whenever that was, I said, okay, I need to like not hide this anymore. And one person um, said, we're gonna put, we're gonna create a website for you. I didn't even do the website myself. Someone said, we'll, we'll create a website. These need to be published. And then there was an off during that. And then and it's interesting now, I didn't understand it till later. But in um, around 2011, 12, that uh, 2012, I was working with, I met someone and she introduced me to her, uh, her, um, her agent, a publishing agent, because she was an author. She's done so many different things. I'm Kathy Eldon is her name. She's created a big organization. And she began to tell me that as they were creating this organization uh, called um, Creative Visions, that the entire staff would read my messages in the morning and that's what help, was helping them get through. And I go, that made no sense to me at that time. And then she wanted me to meet her um, agent because they felt it should be a book or something. And so I started talking to him and I met him he, when he came to Los Angeles and um, we were, and I didn't understand it all then. And then when I go back now and listen and look at it, because the thing fell apart, we never got the book, um, the deal done or any of that. It wasn't the time then. And then I go back now and I list, I look, and when he was responding to me and he was resending, sending me these messages saying, wow, Roger, this is a really good one. This is really great. They were all from 2012, but I had no idea that was happening. I'd only understood it when I got to 2021. And I still, it still was challenging then. And the way that kicked me into was always a, 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 a step. Um, I went and had, during that year, I was so challenged by all of this that I had two Akashic Records readings done. I'd never done those things before. I didn't even know what they were actually before that. And um, the first person that I had the reading done with, she said to me afterwards, um, she hadn't been doing it very long, but she was really great at what she was doing. But she said, hmm, I think I'm supposed to be following you. I, I had no idea what she was talking about. And then I still was not comfortable. So I found someone else and I went back and had another reading done in December of that year. And then she blew me away because she she said everything that I had been feeling. See, my guides told me that we gave you everything we, you needed to know and, and it was a philosophy. And they said, the name of it is called Your Life Operating Instructions. I go, that's crazy. Yeah, you're, you're going to need to operate differently to move into the new world. And so when I, this lady, when she was doing this reading, she, she stopped for a bit. She started telling me about my ancient history, my ancient past, that I had this memory and that I was connected to Egypt and the things that I would do there. I would, and, and crazy stuff. And I said, this doesn't make any sense. But she said, yes, you had a high job. You would cover the eyes of those people who were going to be mummified. And it was a really um, powerful position. She goes, but now you're supposed to do something else in this lifetime. You're here to open the eyes of the others. I go, oh, that, okay. And then she, she paused for a bit and she said, and you were given 
I'm an operating. And she started to say the word. I freaked out. I said, oh, no. I, I broke down in tears at that moment because the recognition could not be any more apparent, evident, clear. It was just it was just all there. I said, oh, OK. <laughs> I guess I got to do this. But I'm saying this because we will all take steps moving into um, our authentic selves, because that's why we were born. Wow, I I'm really glad you're addressing this because I can recognize this in myself. I mean, even having done this show for <laughs> since 2012, I go through my doubts and hearing, <laughs> you know, guests like you going through so many doubts when you're receiving messages and I'm, I'm not receiving messages in that way. Mm. And it's, uh, amazing how I'm discovering new and new uh, layers and levels mm -hmm. within myself right. from limited consciousness I had in my depression 20 years ago and where I am today. And it's now I'm like in this new process where I'm really starting to understand that we're creating our reality and that we can create so much with our minds and because there's something about knowing this on an intellectual level which i <laughs> sort of put myself yeah. in that category like i know a lot of things like intellectually but I'm, now i'm starting to have that wisdom of it like mm -hmm. oh it's really true it's really true <laughs> and as i'm really understanding this on a deeper level i'm seeing my world changing around me now it's it's crazy and it's beautiful um uh, and I, I would love to hear more about you, uh, these guides uh, you're saying willem and you're saying yeah. they so are they the same and who are they? they are the same yeah because um in the beginning when i first started receiving it it felt like uh my there was a person or something speaking directly to me but then i started to understand no it's more than that um, because it felt like a collective of energies. And then people would ask me, because a lot of people channel and they like talk about Archangel Michael, I'm bringing in this person, I'm bringing in that one. And my guide said, you're not doing that. You're bringing in a collective. And so that's why, and they said, you can access universal um, wisdom, cosmic um, wisdom. And I go, that didn't, and that's why I said, and we don't want you to try to think think that it's one particular source because this is the thing that keeps people separated. This is the thing that keeps people from understanding that they have this internal connection and they can make, they have a higher self, everyone does. But when we keep thinking that it's only certain people who can do this and it has to be this particular entity or that particular one that we're connected to, then we don't find that authenticity within us. And what I was given was that we're each meant to bring in something new. We can, we get, oh, there was one message that they said they want, they want me to understand this one. And they gave it to me on January 1st of 2012. And it was called Infinite Intelligence. And they said, Infinite Intelligence, you all have it. It always exists. And you just decide when you're going to accept it and when you're going to utilize it in your life. And they go, what? And then they, I said, well, how can I access all of this information that's coming through? I don't know this stuff. I didn't study anything. I didn't even go to school to study this stuff, but I'm channeling things that I don't understand. I'm writing words. This is the weirdest thing that when, when, I, when I first began, I would write words that I, I had, um, didn't know what they meant. I could kind of figure out how to spell it, but then I would hear my guide say, look it up. They would do that so much. They would say, look it up, go to the dictionary and look it up. But I was, re I was receiving the word. I just didn't understand what it, what it meant, or I didn't understand why they were using it in that particular instance. And, and, that, and then when I would go and look it up, go, oh, now it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it was like, this is to talk about, we all develop in our consciousness that way. And I'm just demonstrating in, in my, my life how that happens, but we all do the same thing, which is what you're saying about we have the doubt. And they said, you're never going to get rid of that. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're never going to get rid of it. And they said, because if you understand, you have different dimensions, different levels that you can always move to, and you're going to doubt whether or not you can do it until you do it. That's what happens. And then as we do it and we embody what you were talking about, yes, that intellectual, because I had the intellectual knowledge was coming in, but the embodiment, owning it in my being was a, a different and totally different thing. 
we have to give ourselves this period of integration is what they said where where we get the information and come this into on that intellectual logical sense it kind of makes sense but then to embody it in our physical practical lives is a different process so this new time that you're speaking mm -hmm. of, how does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, and you also say that some will not open up for it. Right. Uh, so I guess it is a conscious choice right. then. And what do we need to do sort of to open up to it? I know there's several questions there. It is really about what the main thing that keeps coming up for me is about letting go of judgment. Judgment of ourselves and judgment of others. That's the way, only way we're going to get there because we all come in to offer something. And so, and but we also carry in old energies. We carry in old ideologies, beliefs, and all of that. And so they're in, in each person individually. But when we move those, when we can move beyond that, then we understand who we are. And then we start seeing others in, in a different way as well. So the, the, to answer your other question about what does this new world look like, it looks like one where we see everyone as being equal, where we see everyone as being, making an important contribution. Every person that comes in has something within them to offer. And when we can see that, we stop judging each other. We let go of, of, of prejudices. They also said we start seeing women as being equal because we haven't done that for, for centuries as well. It's all about a continual expansion into becoming more in terms of ourselves and our world. We can have a much better world if we all understand and accept that the importance that we bring to the world individually, then we start to see it in everyone else. And this is what they tell me is fifth dimensional thinking, basically, or awareness or consciousness. Will it also will it also be known our galactic history that I hear so much about the truth about the pyramids, the truth mm -hmm. about our extraterrestrial con connection? Mm -hmm. Will that sort of come also uh, in this new world? Yes, they tell me. Well, what happens when these all these questions? Are so funny you're asking these because these came up in a challenge session, and um, I, I remember some of them. But it was saying that. We will each access what is appropriate for our individual journey. Not everyone's going to understand different galaxies. They're not going to have those memories. They're not, but certain people will. But we all help one another by what we remember in our individual journey. And when we bring that in, then more people have memories. And the memory that they're talking about is our connection to source, our connection to God, our connection, you know, they said. Who, do you think that God actually said some some of you are going to come to the earth and not have a purpose? Some of you are going to come to the earth and not have something to offer? That never happened. It's just what you thought. <laughs> it's just what you thought before. And so what we're attempting to understand now is to change that and to come into an understanding we all want to be um, and we all want to be accepted. One thing that I didn't understand this either, and they said, if you can, if you can get this, everyone is looking for the same thing. And I go, what's that? And they said, everyone's, everyone wants acceptance, acknowledgement, and approval. Everyone wants the same thing, acceptance, acknowledgement, and approval. But the fact is we can only give it to ourselves. We keep looking for it for everywhere else, but we can only give it to ourselves. And the more of us who do that, then we start creating a better world. And this is the, they said, this is the information that they gave me. And then I had to live it <laughs> to make it valid. <laughs> right. <laughs> so is it possible to bring William for forward? Yes. Um, and it's easier to, if you, do you have a particular question? Let me, let me do that first. You have a question? I have a question uh, about AI, self-love, negative thinking. Uh, it's just not that easy to really mm -hmm. believe in this and mm -hmm. believe in ourselves and mm -hmm. self-love. I think a lot of people are struggling. Mm. Mm, perfect. Okay, great. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> Thank you so much for these questions that you've brought in. You've given us so much to work with. First, we talked about, we spoke about AI, your artificial intelligence a while ago, and we even had Roger have a wonderful experience with it because he, he attempted to take some of our words and put it into the documents that you have now, 
or you can take something and change it around to make it seem a particular way. And so he did that. He tried it several times and he put in that information and then he looked at the inf what came back, the interpretation, and he read it and he says, wait a minute, that's not exactly what I meant. That's not exactly what I said. This is artificial. And so, so you can use technology for certain aspects, but that technology will never override your individual connection, knowledge, and wisdom that was meant to be coming in only through you. Artificial intelligence will not do that. Now, you will have to understand that it can get out of control, however, because you have humans who are using this information. And what they can do is if they have not let go of their old lower vibrational energies, ideas, thoughts, and all of that, they can kind of corrupt things. But you have more ability to rise to a higher level of understanding with that. Negative thoughts and cre creations that you've called in, the negative beliefs, those are things that you inherited. Those are things that you brought in. Everyone does it. And that's the way that the world, your planet evolves over time. If you could look back over centuries, you will see that your world is no nothing like it was a thousand years ago. That was because beings decided to come onto the physical plane on the earth during a particular time to access more information. As we've said, you always have infinite wisdom and knowledge and, 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 and all of that intelligence. It's always there. You just decide in each lifetime how much you're going to access, how much you're going to bring in. But now you're doing it in a really great way, which is why we've said you're having a restructuring. Your world has been off balance, as we've said, for quite a while, meaning that you started losing the identities of each person. You started losing the importance of each race, of each gender, of each difference, because you can only create something new when you have contrast, when you have differences. That is the power of creation. You have to use your physical elements in your world on your planet to accomplish that, but you're understanding more of that now because all you have to do is look at quantum sciences. They've given you much more information about how you create your lives and how you create your world, and you do them all the same way. You do them energetically. And that energy is of what you're putting out. Now, the negative energy that you might be feeling might not be your fault, but it is your um, duty to recognize it, which means that you're just believing some idea about yourself that is false, something that was implanted within you, something that was told to you that you accepted as reality. You are all beautiful, wonderful beings. And so all you do is come into the world to live lives, move through the restrictions and limitations, as we said. But once you do that, your life becomes what it, you wanted it to become. And then you make a contribution to your world, which all of you can do. Now, we said that not everyone will do this. And you must understand this because you come into the world with different times and, and, and different ideologies you're supposed to live. Now, you're going to see others, as we've spoken of often, that you're going to start to judge because you think they should be acting differently. They should be understanding this. No, they won't necessarily. But they are showing up for you to understand yourself. When you judge, when you see another that is exhibiting something that you find distasteful, it's to cause you to understand what you could bring to counteract any lower vibrational energy that you might be witnessing in your world. And we gave you something in 2012, and we want you to all to understand it now, because as your world moves through these coming changes, there will be some turbulence, and you're going to start to un make judgments about one another and about your world. But we gave you something to understand. You each have what the ability to make to choose preferences. We want you to understand, see, because you can look at something or someone and judge it in a particular way, and that's that's okay, but that's not for you. So then you have a preference, you see, and the preference is what you're choosing to do, what your life has brought into this world at this time, and you will know when you're doing that because you feel good, because you love yourself. That's all, but we want you to understand you're moving through dramatic energies at this time, so everything old is going to come up, and it might be uncomfortable for you when you examine the things about yourselves that you didn't know, that you didn't understand, that are just coming about now, but as you examine them in their um, painful and cry, <laughs> let them go, move through the grief. You're moving through a collective grief now in your world, which is why you're here. So the more that you allow yourself to move through that and become happy and abundant and love yourself, then you're helping, you're doing your job actually, because that's why you were all born, was to bring something of value and worth into the world and it's within you. There's not a single being who was born who doesn't possess that. But you might just take some time 
to uh, access that. And we give you the perfect example in, in, in our being, our messenger, Roger, because he held back for so long, which is why we keep having him speak on that, to be transparent, to say that you all do that, but it's okay because you then eventually move. You eventually come into acceptance of who you are because see, that's the best feeling ever. Then you love yourself. That's how you get to love. You just start noticing how you've been judging yourself and decide to change it in that moment. You can only do anything in the moment of now. So in that moment, give yourself a new idea. Give yourself a new thought that says, yes, I'm worthy. I know this is old stuff and I'm just gonna let go of it. And as you do that, and if you get the bigger picture, you will see that your world will accomplish the the same thing. This is what we wanted to bring to all of you today. And thank you so much for allowing us, giving us this opportunity to give you this information because all we care about is you loving who you are. Thank you. Thank you. That was kind of turned around. <laughs> that happens sometimes. How does it feel? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I I never remember. I get sometimes it starts going, and I, I it was it was so Are you funny. Aware? Was, yeah. Are you aware of what they're saying? Not completely. No. Okay. All right. And that that was and I, I've become that was that was really challenging in the beginning, which is why I didn't even want to do it. But now I've become comfortable with it. There was one session that that was just so shocking to me. It was probably I don't know a year and a half ago. And I, oh, no, it was more than that because it was right after I'd had the Akashic Records readings done. And the lady said, um, she started, she brought up Horus and I didn't know what that was. Um, this, I, I went to find later, it was a, a god, a Greek god or something. I, just, I can't remember now, but Horus. And it's, and I, I studied a little bit about it, but I didn't know this. And so, but during a channeling session, Wilhelm said it, it came out. And so I came out of the channeling session and there were some people in, you know, in the room and one person said, wow, we just found out about horse. I go, what? How, wait a minute, how'd you know that? I go, what, who's, he goes, oh, Wilhelm just told us. I go, really? <laughs> it had been two minutes before. I didn't remember that because I didn't hear it. And I looked at it later. This is what I always have to do. Um, I will go back and listen to the recordings, and then I hear what came through. And wow. that was something that I had to become comfortable with. But but they also, I, I talk about that because we all have that. We all have, you know, this consciousness that's within us that comes out at times, and it's kind of surprising <laughs> <laughs> that it's there. <laughs> I have an important question, I feel like, for a lot of people, because we hear that we have a purpose, and I do webinars about this, and I have sort of my take on it, but people are asking, okay, please tell me, what is my purpose? So how do we go about finding our purpose? Is it like vocational? Is it like a profession? Is Can it be, I'm going to have five kids. I'm going to be a mother. <laughs> And the, the answer that would always come through, what's my life purpose? <laughs> they would say, you're walking in it. <laughs> and what that means is we were each given something to to bring to the world that's within us. We move through it a bit at a time. It cha changes. It comes up at different times in our life, depending on what we're living. But it's always there, and it changes. And someone, um, and we were playing. We we're doing a um, a little watch party of one of the challenging one of the channeling sessions on um, just yesterday. And one person had in the comments that, does your purpose change over time? Go, yeah, it does. Because I've done it many, many times. I thought I was supposed to be this person. I thought I was supposed to be that person. And then not why am I shifting here? It's because there's something within our individual journeys. I said, you each have a divine plan. You each have a blueprint. And it shows up at different times. And all of the things that I, all these messages that I received <laughs> years ago, <laughs> that are only making sense now about, you know, that one was um, about your story. This is one they gave me in 2012 as well. And it said, your story is unique and valuable. I said, it, 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 is, it has the utmost importance for you. And, and it holds that importance because no other soul shares precisely your story. So, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then, they, and then at the end of that, and it said, this is the thing that we want you to get everyone to understand during this time of transition in your world. Because the last paragraph of this says, any aspect of your story that you choose to ignore, 
judge, dismiss, not pay attention will cause you to have some difficulty because you are refusing to receive the information and wisdom and knowledge that your story holds. So what wow. that means is whatever we move through, whatever it is, it's valuable. If we understand that it was a way for us to move through our own individual restrictions or limitations, and then our world gets to do the same thing. Right. I just thought about a girlfriend of mine who is just meeting so many challenges, like her, her house burned down, then her mother get cancer and dies. And then uh, she gets fatigue and has had sick leave. And then her boyfriend breaks up with her. And then like everything happens at the same time. And she's mm -hmm. like, I, I'm shouting out to the universe, like, what is going on? I'm collapsing. Mm -hmm. And my heart is breaking for her. And I'm like, I feel sometimes that it's a bit cliche coming with, there's a deeper meaning with this, you know, just hanging in, hang in there. <laughs> do you have any thoughts about I that? I do. I just, you're so funny, you should say, <laughs> this is crazy. I just had a consultation with someone yesterday who had a similar life to your friend. And she's going through all of these crazy things that have happened and happening all at the same time. And why? And she's feeling, I must, I'm, I have this terrible karma. I'm being punished. I'm doing all of that. I go, oh, no, that's not what's happening at all. I said, and if you could change your perspective about that and see it in a new way, it would feel different. Because what I'm seeing is that you agreed to accept a whole bunch of stuff. You agreed to accept a whole bunch of challenges that you could move through in your life. Because when you do that, you're never going to have to repeat them ever again. You're going to also understand and cover something that is so wonderful and beautiful about who you are. And then you can give that back to the world. Yeah, it might take you some while to do that when you understand it, but that's why you have it. There's no way that you could have had all been given. And I tell them to change that to being given. And then the other thing that started happening, I'm um, talk about this because karma. Um, my guides had me start saying, uh, we want you to start talking about Dharma and we're gonna change it around a bit because, because as humans, we, we take the idea of karma and think that it's something, these horrible things that we have done that we're being punished for now. And I said, that's never what's going on. It's that you accepted certain things when you came into this life. You agreed to move through these things. And if you do it, then you live this wonderful life and you give that back to everyone else as well. So it's not about, you're not, never being punished. You're just coming to understand the challenges that you accepted, that you agreed to move through. And when you change your perspective about that, it'll be easier to move through it. Makes sense. I have some questions I ask all my guests and you did sort of address the self-love. So I won't take that, but okay. what does a happy life mean to you? What is a happy life for you? It means, a, it means a journey and the journey is the destination is my friend whose book <laughs> wrote. And it's about becoming willing to take a step each day into understanding and loving who you are. That's in, and it's a step each day. we try to get there really quickly. I think that's what people get really frustrated. I want it to be over. I want everything to be better right now. We can't do that. We have to work with our physical brains, which have implanted certain things. We know how the science of new, we know neuroscience now. We don't change things overnight. We have to understand that it's a process. And they gave me something else a long time ago saying, practice patience and persistence. That's all the three things you need. You can, you can do anything. If you're experiencing something you don't like, it's been terrible, then you're practicing something wrong. You got to practice new thoughts now. And then you're going to have to be patient because you're going to uncover things about yourself that you didn't understand. And then you're going to, you might be tempted to judge yourself and go into regret or something like that. Waste of time. Don't do that. Then they said, and then persistence, because you have to understand that it's a continual process. And as long as you stay in it, you'll get to the destination. Makes sense. And what is the deeper meaning of life from your perspective? Happiness. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, I've come to that. Uh, I, I saw a guru one day sa said online on the YouTube uh, video, all uh, or what everybody yearns for is happiness. Yes. That was like the big thing, and I was like, "Yeah, that makes sense." I really yes. just want to be happy. Okay, I'll 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 end with this because this was again years ago. I was listening to a video. And someone was talking and then she yelled, 
she it seemed to me I couldn't have been might not have been that at all but she said your purpose is happiness I go what and everyone can kind of take that one <laughs> I, agree. I say that in my webinars as well <laughs> oh great yes. I love it thank you so much Roger where can people thank find you at my website rogerburnley.com that's oh. the best place Thank you so much for doing this amazing work and for coming onto the show today. Thank you. I can't, I, I loved it so much. Thank you for having me. Great. <laughs> and thank you for watching, guys. Much light from the US and Norway. Bye bye. Yeah.